Hey guys, it is April from Getting Her Go With It. Today I am here to do a science fiction slash fantasy haul for you. I'm so excited about these books, so let's get into it. picked up is The Martian by Andy Weir. Now I have read The Martian and absolutely loved it and I knew that I needed this on my shelves because I thought it was brilliantly written. This is fast-paced um, and it follows a man who is an astronaut. He is on a mission to Mars. He's the botanist of the group and they are out collecting samples on Mars and all of a sudden, this storm comes in. Mark Watney, our character, is uh, kind of knocked out and the rest of his team think that he's died. And so they leave and he wakes up and he's completely alone. And so he has to figure out a way to survive on Mars until the team can first a know that he is alive he needs to somehow get in contact with earth and b once he is maybe able to get in contact with earth he needs to find a way to survive until they can come and get him mark watney is one of my favorite narrators ever he is uh sharp and funny and he definitely likes to use foul language and who wouldn't in this kind of situation loved it I also picked up The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I don't know why I didn't have a copy of The Handmaid's Tale uh, myself. I must have borrowed my sister's when I read it many moons ago, but I finally have my own copy and my goodness, this is one of the best sci-fi books um, that has ever been written in my opinion. Margaret Atwood is a wonderful Canadian feminist author. Um, this is about a world in which women have absolutely no rights at all. There is also kind of a mass infertility um, issue happening where people are just not able to have children. And the women who are able to have children, uh, the government has taken and those women have only one use and that is to co continue the population essentially. So we follow Offred who is one of the handmaids and their job is only to produce more children for the world. A woman's right to her body is the main issue in this book and so if you are a man or a woman I think it is essential to read this book because a woman's right to her body is still up for debate constantly in our society which is just bullshit. So if you think that's bullshit too, you're gonna love this book. I also picked up The Humans by Matt Haig. Now this is meant to be a really funny book about a Martian who comes to Earth in the form of a professor. And so this Martian, you know, drinks wine and he reads poetry and he's really trying to fit right in. And he's also like, kind of criticizing humans. You know, he doesn't like how they look, what they eat. He doesn't understand um, relationships and stuff. So I I've heard that this is really, really funny. Uh, so I picked that one up. I also picked up Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I absolutely adore Station Eleven. This is one of the best dystopian novels I've ever read. And she's Canadian, which is so great. This follows a world where this flu has kind of spread and has killed off a lot of the population but there are some survivors and those survivors are trying to kind of re-establish some sort of normalcy in the world and we follow a group of artists they are actors and musicians and they go from little settlement to little settlement and they perform for the survivors we go back and forth in time from before the flu spread and while the flu is spreading to I think it's 20 years later um, and you see the results and oh it's so good I need to read more of Emily St. John Mandel this isn't the only book that she's written and I need to pick up more from her the next book that I picked up is Exit West by Moshin Hamid 
Now this I'm not sure if it's technically exclusively fantasy. Fantasy contemporary. Let's go with that. This follows two lovers and their country is just completely torn with war. It is in the streets all around them and they keep hearing about these doors. These doors can whisk people far away if perilously and for a price. And these people decide to open one of these doors and make that leap of faith. This is about the refugee experience and uh, it's meant to be a very inventive look on that. So I'm so eager to read this. I've heard wonderful things about this, specifically on the podcast on the front porch. I think Annie and Chris really, really loved this book and I'm very eager to read it. I also picked up Six Wakes by Mer Laferty. This takes place in space and I guess the idea is that you are cloned as a person and you never die because you're constantly being cloned and your consciousness is just uh, transferred to your new body constantly. So Maria wakes up in her little cloning vat. However, there is blood everywhere and that is not normal at all. So I guess someone has been murdered. However, she has no memory. Like usually when you're cloned, your memory is brought with you, but she doesn't remember anything. So it just sounds like so much fun. And Julie from A Girl in a Book read this and really liked it. She thought it was super fast paced and really fun. So when I saw this out of Value Village, I grabbed it. I also picked up Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. And this is a kind of apocalyptic book about the end of the world and it follows an astronomer and uh, a little girl I think and they realize quickly that they're the last people in the world. They have no contact with the outside world. They don't know if anyone is still alive and it's about their experience. I love this cover, first of all. It is really, really gorgeous. And I do love an apocalyptic kind of book, so I'm hoping it's a good one. Now, the wonderful people from Penguin Random House Canada sent me The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I have been wanting to read The Name of the Wind for such a long time, and this is such a beautiful edition. It is a floppy, gorgeous book and I cannot wait to dive into this. This follows a man named Quoth, and he, I think, meets up with someone at a pub and starts telling his story, and his story is layered and complex, and he is a brilliant, brilliant man, and apparently he knows it. He has a little bit of sass and a little bit of confidence that, you know, leans towards the cocky side of things. I'm just gonna read a little bit of the back for you because it's so, it just sounds wonderful. I have stolen princesses back from sleeping barrow kings. I burned down the town of Treban. I have spent the night with Valurian and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from the university at a, a younger age than most people are allowed in. I tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during day. I have talked to God's loved women and written songs that make minstrels weep. You may have heard of me. I, I already love him. I'm so excited. I think I'm going to read this in, you know, late autumn. That seems like a really good time to dive into something like this. So. Thank you so much to the people of Penguin Random House Canada. I really, really appreciate this, so thanks guys. I finally picked up Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. This is such a gorgeous, gorgeous edition of this book. It's almost got this opal-esque kind of vibe on here. It's shimmery and lovely. And this follows Ursula, who lives her life time and time again. She lives it over and over, and I believe she is trying to change some history, maybe specifically about World War II. I could be totally wrong on that, 
but I've heard wonderful things about this. Um, a lot of people adore Kate Atkinson's writing, so I decided to pick this one up. And those are all of the sci-fi, dystopian, fantasy kinds of books that I picked up. I am so excited. Let me know um, if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. I'd love to know. Don't give me any spoilers though, because that's just mean. Thanks guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!